welcome. Uh, this is Dr. Joe Connor. Uh, this is the first program on the Connor Bubble for this particular year. And I'm excited about sharing with you some interesting things that we're doing to move along the idea of helping uh, educators locate uh, monies for uh, their various projects, for example, capital uh, projects or consumable projects. Capital projects would be uh, building buildings, something of that nature. Consumer projects would probably be buying chemicals for a chemical lab, buying pencils, erasers, paper, that kind of thing. So we're looking to uh, help in a very major way uh, to be able to help uh, different educators around the country uh, to locate willing donors. In fact, we even, I've launched a uh, project, I call it 2014 Project, where I'm focusing on female presidents of colleges and uh, female superintendents of districts around the country to help them locate willing donors. And we have basically a, a, a major component of that is where we are offering to give them lists of willing donors uh, to contribute up to $100 million to help those presidents of colleges if they're working on a fundraising campaign and if they need help with fundraising campaign to give them a list of willing donors. And the requirement would be basically if they get the list, uh, we're asking them to start contacting the willing donors in five business days. And it's been my experience, if they're not willing to say we can start contacting them in five business days, they wouldn't contact them in two years. So there's no point wasting time with those uh, particular educators or nonprofits because we also want to work with nonprofits. Uh, you may recall if you're a regular viewer of the Connor Bubble, we've shared with you in the past, in 2012, we helped uh, colleges in 16 states locate over $5 billion worth of willing donor money uh, where they would get in contact with these willing donors and it was in excess of $5 billion in uh, different uh, states, 16 states in all, California is one, New York, Florida, uh, uh, Tennessee, uh, and Alabama, things of this nature. And so what we want to do is just expand that and this is why we want to work with uh, project uh, 2014 uh, uh, project to try to help more female presidents. Roughly 20% of the college presidents in the United States are female. And uh, as you might uh, recognize, female leaders are not always respected as their uh, male counterparts. So the thought was it would be fun to see if I can help these uh, presidents move uh, things along and change uh, uh, the paradigm a little bit. In fact, uh, we've been able to send out a list to three different college presidents, two in Alabama and one in Florida. Uh, we sent out lists uh, totaling uh, in Alabama between $100 million and a uh, billion dollars, over a billion dollars of willing donors in the state of Alabama to help these two schools in Alabama. And we uh, also sent out a list of uh, donors in Florida to help this uh, school in Florida to uh, locate uh, willing donors and they collectively could give over a billion dollars as well. So we see that, that things are uh, possible. Uh, I had a, a, a call to a superintendent of schools in, in, uh, in California yet just yesterday, which was the uh, January 27, 2014, and I was explaining to the secretary that we wanted to help uh, the uh, superintendent locate willing donors in the excess of uh, $100,000 or more they could contribute, and we wanted to help them uh, uh, locate over $100 million worth of willing donors. She said, that's not possible, and then she hung up on me. And uh, so this is the kind of situation that may be happening more and more around the country, is that people don't believe when they have staff members that are, have an attitude of disbelief, and therefore many opportunities for our educators uh, are being uh, thwarted before it really get off the ground. But I'm not going to let that deter trying to help this superintendent. So when she comes back in town from her conferences, I'll call again and see if I can get a, a chance to talk with her and let her hang up on me and not have her secretary hang up on me. And so regardless of that, we're moving forward to help as many colleges uh, as we can. I have one uh, collaborator who's given me a list of superintendents, female superintendents in California. New York and Mississippi. So we are going to be looking to see if we can help those superintendents uh, scattered around uh, the country. And so part of what we wanted to do for you 
as a viewer of the counter bubble is to encourage you to consider self-publishing uh, so you can get your story out and to share what you're doing and we have a couple of books that we want to share and it turns out that both of these books are written by family members of, of mine one is by my sister uh, Mary L. Connor and the other is my aunt Clinton uh, Jordan we call it Clem uh, for short and we have different aspects of what these uh, books are and we're going to have the engineer in a few moments uh, queue up the books and we're going to talk about uh, both of the books uh, in turn and we have a short video uh, we want to show in a few moments if the engineer is ready we'll start showing the cover of both books and then we'll uh, talk about those uh, one book from uh, uh, my aunt Clinton uh, Jordan is the way I see it a devotion a devotional it's a little pamphlet and then the other one is by my sister Mary Connor it's called is the, the crime worth your time it's a little pamphlet on uh, crime prevention she works in the juvenile justice system in in the Los Angeles area and she was very concerned about uh, young people going to jail and uh, and parents uh, the grief of these parents so she put together this little booklet to so uh, help them understand the terminology understand the penal code system and what's all involved with once a young person gets involved with the criminal justice system a large percentage of the african-american community are uh, associated with the penal system uh, and a lot of it is because the targeting of, of african-american males and also uh, issues in schools and where the uh, uh, disproportionate uh, disciplinary actions uh, because of cultural differences uh, that lead to more uh, criminal uh, cases. So, uh, what, having said that, when the engineers are ready, uh, we can queue up uh, the books and then go into the short video and I'll be right back. I'm a graduate from Thomas Jefferson High School. I'm also a graduate from the University of Southern California from the School of Education. I also hold two master's degrees from the University of Phoenix. My first master's is in management. My second master's in, is in business administration. The title of the book that I wrote is, Is a Crime Worth Your Time? The reason I chose this topic is because I find a lot of people in my, a lot of young people in my profession, which is the probation department, parents clearly don't understand what happens once a minor commits a crime. So in this book, Is a Crime Worth Your Time? It has resource information that will help the parents and the minors get a clear understanding of what happens through the court proceedings. My target audience for this book is minors and the parents so both can look and understand what's going on without within the court proceeding i'm also a member of the true samaritan missionary baptist church uh, as a youth director and a sunday school teacher from the ages three to eight three to eight years old with this book entitled is a crime worth your time i want to take this book into the community like the park and recreation, the school, the churches, wherever there are young, young people organizations that have a need to get a clear understanding of what's going on in the community and what causes one to do a crime is within, within this book. I look forward to hearing from people who want me to do workshops. Um, you can reach me at my email address at mryconnor. C-O-N-N-E-R at yahoo.com. Again, my email address is M-R-Y-Connor, C-O-N-N-E-R at yahoo.com. This book will also be available on amazon.com. I want to leave this message with you. This is my motto. Every child deserves to be treated with love and respect. Thank you and have a good day. Well, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, uh, my sister Mary Connor is very passionate about helping young people who have come in contact uh, in a negative way with the criminal justice system. And I want to share with you some of her words that would be able to understand that, uh, and, and so you'd be able to understand these kinds of things. 
uh, and why she's so concerned about the criminal justice system. And this little pamphlet that I have has such a rich amount of information, things I never really knew uh, uh, were involved with the, the criminal justice system. Let me read her, her, her introduction. I have a deep concern for, for youth and what is happening to them when they commit a crime. I've discovered that minors and parents really don't have a clear understanding of what's about to happen when their child commits a crime. Unfortunately, some of the crimes they commit will affect them for the rest of their lives. For the past 10 years, I've worked for the Los Angeles County Probation Department. I have seen young people come in and out of the juvenile justice system as though it, this was the way of life for them. It wasn't until 2010 when I took an, on the role of community develop, detention officer as the officer of the day uh, for minors who had been placed in the house arrest by the court that I fully understood the challenges and the misunderstanding and, and shared lack of knowledge that parents and their children face. This guide is intended to help juveniles and their parents with basic information about what to expect when they go to court. For example, what are the judge's guidelines in the courtroom? How should one dress when making an appearance in court? Uh, this guide also shares information on some of the basic penal codes as well as the definitions of basic terms that relate to the legal system. I believe that if a person knows better, they can do better and make better choices. The juvenile court is no longer a place where you'll get a clean uh, slate when you turn 18. Today, almost every uh, ad adjudication of delinquencies is accompanied by long-term consequences, including DNA tests, adult-style fingerprinting, is the crime worth your time it was prepared as a guide for minors and parents to better understand what they, to expect when a child commits a crime. With these pages, you will find some basic tips that can help you before and after the process of, of court. Here's something I never really thought about. It has to do with the, the, um, the, the medical system in terms of if you're in terms of the Medicare. Uh, this has to do with Youth Discharge uh, Planning Act, SB 1469, things to do. When a youth enters the juvenile detention system, they lose any Medi-Cal or health families insurance coverage they may have had prior to incarceration. I never knew that. This termination of coverage presents a huge problem for many youth because upon their release from custody, many of these youth are in need of medical care which they cannot receive until they re-enroll at the health insurance program. There are huge rates of uh, recidivism among juvenile uh, population. Often the reason for the ward uh, return to uh, custody is the result of his or her failure to receive treatment for mental health or substance abuse disorder. A recent study conducted at the University of California, Irvine found that Harmful alcohol and drug use by adolescents in juvenile detention facilities was 70,000 of the 100,000 admissions to juvenile hall across California counties in 2004. And this is something to keep in mind. Also, I'm 62 right now, so I don't think about registering with the, uh, the draft or the military. But here's something. Do the right thing, men 18 and uh, 25. Register. It's quick, it's easy, and it's the law. Registration is a process by which the U.S. government collects names and addresses of men ages 18 to 25 to use in case of a national emergency determined by Congress and the President, which will require rapid expansion of the armed forces. Men are required to register within 30 days of their 18th birthday. Once men reach 26th birthday, they do no longer have to register as stated by the Military Selective Service Act. What happens if you don't register? Not registering is a felony. Young men persecuted and convicted, uh, prosecuted and, and convicted of a, a, a failure to register may be fined up to a quarter of a million dollars, it's $250,000, $250, imprisoned up to five years or both. Failure to register also may cause men to per permanently lose eligibility for student financial aid, government employment, job training, and U.S. citizenship for male immigrants. Those are some serious consequences for failure to register. 
And so there are some other things that I think that will be interesting. There's the penal code, the various listing of the penal codes. It gives you some information on, on terminology. There's around 100 different terms uh, that they have here that you can look at and they help you out and help you identify what's going on. It's a, it's a good glossary to have. Uh, it talks about what will happen after your case is heard. The judge can order a minor to be placed in several different places after their hearing. For example, detained in juvenile hall, suitable placement, camp, arrest, uh, house arrest, which is CDP, which stands for Community Detention Program. Uh, did you know that the social media can be used in court? Now, this was fascinating. I never knew that. Facebook is a social utility that connects people with friends and others who work, study, live around them. People use uh, www.public.domainimage.com. Do you wonder just how much of what you post on Facebook has slipped unintentionally into the public domain? Did you know that the Library of Congress is archiving tweets and lawyers are using Facebook status updates and cross-examination? How private are your musings? And you can look in, uh, there's a uh, 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 npr.org uh, template story uh, that you can look at, get some information. The thing that minors should know about social media, it can be used in court as evidence in your case. Example of social media, Facebook, MySpace, texting messages, Instagram, tweets, and Vine are examples. The difference between a lawyer and a public defender, the lawyer works with the family, the public dis uh, defender works only for the minor. And so that gives you an, an example of some slight differences. So what are we talking about? We're talking about if you want to know more about the criminal justice system, this is a tiny little resource that will save your parents and yourself if you, uh, or relatives a lot of anguish because you know the right words to ask, the right questions to ask, and we en encourage you to check it out. It's now available on uh, Amazon, so, uh, so you can check that out. The other book is by Clinton Jordan, also self-published. And so uh, that's the whole point of this, these two books. I want you to understand, I want to encourage you to get your ideas in print and so you can share with other people because it's really valuable information. These short pamphlets are an in, invaluable resource. This is a, a little pamphlet that uh, my aunt put together called The Way I See It. It's a devotional. So it, it goes on with her various musings and examples and things that, uh, uh, that she's um, experienced throughout her life. And it says, life is like a storybook is the title of this one. This is practice his presence, allowing the Holy Spirit to feel at home in you, uh, giving one uh, of oneself. Uh, then we talk about some other things, love expression, uh, the worship and divine initiative. Uh, how do we get it? Talking about different things that we want to acquire and then tribute to uh, her sister and her sister's husband about their dedication to their wedding vows and how we, uh, marriages, there are difficulties, but uh, she's acknowledging uh, how important it is to honor your wedding vows even through the difficult times. We're talking about God's grace is another section. So this is just helpful little hints that, that can get you through some difficult times. And let's face it, uh, we all go through our ups and downs. And if you have access to some devotionals, these kind of things can help you uh, meet some of the challenges. Uh, then here's one, Out of the bo Mouths of Babes. There's a song that I love to listen to. One of the verses I sing over and over again, Jesus is the light, the light of the world. Uh, he even shineth in my soul. I often sing that song at home when I am cleaning or cooking or whatever my task may be. One day while caring for my granddaughter, uh, Sydney, she asked me, Grandma, why do you just always sing that song? I told her because I like it. Then she wanted to know if we really had a soul. I told her we do. The next question was, is Jesus really there and is he shining right now? Again, I told her, then why can't you see him? Does he shine like the sun? She questioned, yes, he does, Sydney. Just like the sun gives light and energy to the earth, Jesus gives us light and energy. Then I sang a little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Well, Sydney still wanted to see the light of Jesus in my soul. Sydney was only two. It made me think. 
Do other people see the light of Jesus in my life? And, this, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, Jesus told us, you are the, the light of the world, and people who sit in darkness have uh, seen a great light. God's word says we are children of the light, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 5. I believe there are, and she goes on to say, I believe there are many others just like Sydney who are looking for Jesus in us that want to see that light. They don't want to hear about it as just a song, but are crying out, show me the light of Jesus shining in your life. So as you can see, she is, is actively trying to encourage people to be real with, with God and with Christ. And then uh, here's one in the morning. In the morning while I'm getting out of bed, I give you thanks for the strength that enables me to raise my head. In the morning while I dress myself, I lift my thoughts to you for I am able to stretch out my arms and bend down and buckle my shoe. I am so grateful to you. In the morning while I make my coffee or my tea, I think of you supplying my needs. In the morning when I step outside of my door, I take notice of your creation and thank you and praise you evermore, or even more. In the morning I, and throughout the day, I can't help but give you praise for who you are, for all the wonders of this beautiful world you made. The morning and evening were the first day. God, I am so grateful for morning. So you can see that there are different ways that you can express yourself. We have a devotional book. We have a, a resource book helping people in the penal uh, justice system. Each one, in their own way, are vital to helping their neighbors. And that's what we want to do on the Connor Bubble and be able to share things with you in a very special way on what can be done in your own way, in your own gift that you have. I shared at the beginning of the program that we're working on a project called Pro 2014 Project where we're looking to help female college presidents uh, and uh, female superintendents focusing our attention on, on those uh, uh, educators and leaders to help them uh, get ahead by uh, locating willing donors. And that's what we're going to be doing in all 50 states. And we'll be sharing uh, progress with you, uh, regular listeners of the Connor Bubble. And we are we're wanting to do our part as these authors are doing their part. And uh, we want to encourage you. What are some of the things that you can do? You can do volunteerism. Uh, for example, the National Park Service uh, is doing a lot of activities to replant native plants after a big wo uh, fo a forest fire. They do a lot of planting of natural vegetation. You can get out with your family members. You don't need any special skills. Uh, you can contact your the National Park Service and they can tell you how you can get involved. Uh, you can uh, read books uh, to uh, young people in the library. You can uh, go to uh, nursing homes and sing to nursing home uh, residents. Uh, you can go and in, involve with the in, uh, food kitchens. Uh, you can help with homelessness uh, by going and helping uh, people and uh, serving meals. Or uh, you can uh, go to a school and help the school uh, uh, and ask them how they need help and some of the things that they need, uh, in the, say, in the library or, or shelving different things. You can find out if they need volunteers at school. Uh, then you can go in terms of working in your, with your elected official and seeing if they need help uh, in their offices or in their campaigns. So you get involved. We're going to be having elections uh, for Congress uh, uh, coming up this year in 2014, and then that's going to be a real big uh, uh, concern. Uh, you can involve yourself in the politics. You can go to the hospitals and then help in the children's wards or other wards uh, in the hospital, in the maternity ward, see if there's any help that you can do there. And there is a lot of things you can do if you like animals. There are animal shelters. You can go involved and get in, involved with animal shelters. Uh, they are, if you like the domestic animals or you can want to deal with marine animals, there are marine uh, mammal centers and uh, around uh, the area. You can go to uh, the uh, uh, San Pedro, Fort MacArthur Marine Mammal uh, Care Center. There's also the bird, oil bird uh, 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 sanctuary that's also in San Pedro. You can go and help uh, in the in birds that have been injured through the oil spills. Uh, you can get involved with that. The aquaria around, for example, Cabrillo Marine Aquarium. My students at Pasadena City College, we go on a regular basis twice a semester to go and collect trash 
uh, in uh, Cabrillo uh, Beach. We've been doing that since 1994. We've worked with the National Park Service on uh, volunteering on various things from uh, Santa Cruz Island up to the Santa Monica Mountains, down to San Diego. Uh, we've been involved with trying to, to help as, as best we can in the community. And what this program is all about is to encourage you in 2014, do not listen to the negative uh, uh, situation that you may hear about the economy and things of this nature. It may be tough, but at the same time, you have within your power to make choices to uh, improve your condition. And I encourage you, volunteerism may be a key to many uh, uh, successful uh, career opportunities by helping out in the community. You never really know who you might bump into helping out. And it helps you get you out of the house and get you in a positive attitude by giving uh, back to other people. Uh, Zig Ziglar, the late Zig Ziglar has a saying that you can get anything you want if you make sure enough people get what they need and want, and therefore you also will get what you want. So you don't have to worry so much about getting what you want if you can focus on helping people get what they, they need. Uh, and so this is what this program is all about, to encourage you to look around you and see what you can do to make your community a better community. It could be as simple as picking up paper. You didn't put it down on the ground, but you can pick it up and uh, everything is better. Uh, many of you already do this in the bathroom. I know you go in and you see trash in the bathroom and you go pick it up and no big deal, but it looks a lot better after you've been in there and we know that you have done your best. We're here at the Connor Bubble and we want to say thank you for watching uh, this particular program and this is for self-publishing and uh, getting your thoughts out, getting your, telling your own story and we appreciate you for listening, and you have a fantastic day.